Hi, and welcome to E's Bookshelf. This is a podcast about my bookshelf, which includes historical fiction, realistic fiction, science fiction, fantasy, and mystery books. I'm your host, Alicia Driver. So in today's episode, I'll be discussing the book The Cipher by Isabella Malando. I think this book is important because it talks about many things that people face or have faced in their life, such as foster care, the foster care system, emancipation, adoption, abduction, verbal abuse, physical abuse, and psychological abuse. So warning, this book does have many things that some may find triggering. So this book talks about how social media can also be used as a weapon, and it talks about racism, which are issues that many people face. So Nina is an FBI agent who was abducted when she was 16. Obviously, she escaped, and she had a very troublesome past. Growing up in the foster care system and group homes, Nina became an emancipated teenager. Later, she became a cop, and she made her way up through the ranks. Now she works as an FBI agent. So while she's investigating a murder, she notices the murder victim has the necklace that she was wearing when she was abducted. She noticed the murder victim looked like her at the age that she was abducted, too. So you can clearly see the patterns of a murderer. This book also gives examples on what it's like to be a part of the FBI and a viewpoint that I've never seen before. And I very much enjoyed it. So I watch Forensic Files, where they solve real-life murders, and I also watch the show Bones, which is a realistic fiction show about crime solving, and one of the main characters is an FBI agent. I like realistic crime shows because being a 5'2 woman, it teaches you how to be safe. So her abductor is playing games. He is using social media, leaving strange messages with hidden meanings, and he is continuing to kill. This book goes into the killer's background, and his background has a lot of verbal abuse, physical abuse, and psychological abuse, which results in his style of murder. Not only does the abductor use social media as a weapon from a distance, he also uses her emotions against her. The abductor is very clever, intelligent, motivated, and creative in his ways of keeping his identity a secret. So, here come the spoilers. Stop now if you don't like spoilers. Okay, so Nina is attacked by the cipher and he gets away with and he gets away but she scratches him and they get his skin cells from her nails and they try to track him down. We find out later that the cipher is a product of a scientist hoping to create the superior offspring. Yeah, and then he continues on his murder spree. He captures another girl, but before he can harm her any further, Nina and her team save her. The Cypher has many incredible disguises that make him impossible to track down. I was thinking that a man as smart as he is could have had a great career in science or history or the crime field but he chooses to use his talent for this, so that's sad. So when the paramedics arrive to help the girl, Nina notices that the exact same thing, she notices that he said the exact same thing the cipher had said to her. Master yourself. All the pieces begin to fall into place. So, the cipher was obviously abused as a child. His father burnt cigarettes on his back in the shape of the Odin symbol, who is a god in Norse Norse mythology. He believed that he was the future of the human race. Talk about racism. And he needed to master his own pain. So, while reading this, I did get kind of sad after reading about the cipher's backstory because I imagine that he could have been a decent man if he later got therapy and maybe medication but because he was so brainwashed and abused and that stuff alters your brain chemistry and obviously having a bad childhood is not an excuse to be a bad person but I think everyone everyone has the ability to get better but anyways so Nina goes after the cipher 
and he injects her with this drug and if there was just a little bit more of it it could have killed her he traps her and binds her she convinces him to unbind her because she says that she's going to vomit and he agrees so the book ends with nina stabbing and killing the cipher and i researched this author and it turns out she has a total of seven books including this one including this one so all of them they're about detectives and fbi agents and one of them is the the detective is dead set on taking down a cartel this author has another book coming out in 2023 called a killer's game it turns out this book the cipher is going to be made into a film for netflix starring jennifer lopez so this author has a blog, and I checked it out, and she was actually an FBI agent herself. She was the first Latina to attain the rank of captain in the Fairfax County Police Department just outside of Washington, D.C. And she retired as a commander of special investigations and forensics, and I'm actually curious as to what the scariest case is that she has ever had to deal with. Her blog doesn't say much about her childhood, so I wonder if she incorporated her own childhood into Nina's story, or if Nina ever gets therapy to cope with her trauma. I also thought that the title was pretty creative. Um, I can't really say that I relate much to this character, because although I watch crime shows, I've never encountered anything like this in real life, and I didn't grow up in the foster care system, but I know people who have. And I think Jennifer Lopez would be perfect to play this character, considering that she is Latin descended. And I can't wait to see this book turned into a film. Hopefully this doesn't turn out like one of one of those films where everything is off and then it just makes you mad after you read the book first. Anyways, so the action and mystery and the thriller this book has definitely gives you chills here and there. And I also like how this book shows the emotional side of being in this type of field. When I would watch Bones, I would hear her. I would hear the main character say that she puts a face on every skull that she looks at. So I can't imagine having a job that requires this much emotion and this much gruesomeness every day. But we need people who can put their feelings aside for a moment to bring justice to others and to help prevent these types of things from happening. I did consider being a forensic scientist at one point in my life, um, however things did not go as planned, but that's okay because I wouldn't trade my life now for anything. Not to mention, this career choice is dangerous, and I'm so grateful for those who are willing to take the risk. I would definitely recommend this book to anyone who loves adrenaline and mystery and puzzles, and this book is kind of sad, but every story needs a sad part to make the happy parts happier. I can't really say that this book taught me any life lessons because I was already watching real life crime shows and a lot of these shows talk about what makes a killer a killer. Most of it is rooted in childhood abuse or killers often start off killing animals for pleasure and then decide that it's not bringing them enough joy so they upgrade to humans. <laughs> so her blog is just isabellamalando.com and as of now this series has a total of three books and I have already read the second one but I have not read the third one yet. I still have a lot of unread books on my shelf so I guess I'll just add this one to the list. So if you want to ask me any questions about a future podcast or if you have any book recommendations you can email me at aliciadriver at gmail.com that's E-L-L-Y-S-I-A-D-R-I-V-E-R at gmail.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram, which is Alicia Driver. And check out Beyond the Book with Julie for author interviews on YouTube. And you should follow her Instagram, which is the Julie Chan Show, because she was the one who recommended the cipher to me. And this book is the first one in the series, so next time I'll be back with A Different Dawn, which is the second book, and the book starts off with Nina in the foster care system, and she hears the story of this Latin folktale, La Llorona, which 
will play a big part in the next crime she will solve and Nina finally reconnects with her blood family and we learn even more about her past. So until next time, bye!